Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Molly Pope Art. This is a tutorial on how to paint crocus flowers. Um, they are one of the earliest signs of spring where I live and they are a welcome sign after a long winter. I love the colors they come in and also they range from yellows to whites to striations of colors and all shades of purple. So um, I love spring flowers the most out of all of the flowers seasonally, um, just because I love the colors, I love the fragrance, and I think they're the most beautiful. So I first began my crocus painting with a line drawing, and I'll add that drawing to my Pinterest page, Molly Pope Art. So I'll also add um, the link to that uh, free downloadable how-to drawing uh, in, the, in the description for this video. So feel free to follow the link and um, print out the step-by-step -step instructions so that you can learn how to draw your own crocus flower. I began base coating the petals with a mixture of um, ultramarine blue, which is a really beautiful uh, sort of a purpley blue, and the, that color gets based um, on all of the petals, and from time to time I typically will mix in a little bit of um, a magenta color. Um, I like that when I'm painting realistically um, to mix a lot of different colors together um, on my palette and just have striations of color. I think that makes your paintings look a lot more realistic. So that ultramarine blue gets added down on the base of those petals down towards where they would be in the center of the flower. And working out from that, I'll gradually add a little bit of white to those colors to kind of lighten them and if you think of where the sunlight would be hitting those petals, it would be towards the tips of the petals. So those lighter colors um, get added towards the tips of the petals and the darker, more true color gets added down towards the base of the petals. So a crocus flower, the shape of it, what you wanna think of when you're drawing and you're painting this is sort of a, the flower shape itself, the head of the flower, is kind of like a bowl shape. So they are more um, uh, narrow towards the base of the petal, towards the base of the flower, and then as the petals m go move out, they're still a cup shape, but they sort of fan out a little bit more. If you think of a bowl shape, I think that helps to envision sort of the shape of the flower head itself that you that you're the goal is that you're going for to add some curve and some dimension to that flower so that it looks a lot more 3d now the other colors that are mixed um, with those petals like i said it's ultramarine blue towards the base of the petals on the outside of the petals where they're kind of it shows that cupped shape um, that is mixed with the magenta mixed with a small amount of ultramarine blue and then white towards the tips. Um, and I started in the very back of the flower, um, those back petals, and then working from left to right on the side petals. And then um, each gets that mix of the ultramarine blue um, mixed with white towards the tip. And that is pretty much the base of those petals. And you can see me adding all of those colors in the petals. Um, acrylic colors, they do tend to cover better um, than watercolor per se, but you have to build up layers in your painting, even with acrylics. So the first layer tends to be kind of more of a wash, meaning I use more water on my brush than um, paint and then um, I'll typically let an area dry down a little bit um, and go back over it with more layers so you're building up uh, transparent layers over and over again until you get the desired effect that you are trying to achieve
And also I use uh, about three different sizes of brushes on this crocus painting. The head of the crocus is a couple inches um, high and the whole design is about six inches in height overall and about maybe four inches wide. Um, and so the brushes that I use, um, this is, the majority of this is painted with a number six round. Um, so it's still a fairly small brush. Um, and the way that you start out with um, is that the larger an area that you are trying to paint, the larger size of brush that you need to use. Um, you'll cover more, sp more space. And as you work into more detail and as per se like um, down in the base of each petal or if you are adding some vein lines to your petals you'll want to go smaller and smaller in brush size the smallest that i used um, for the majority of the detail was then a number two brush but i also have a tiny little brush that um, i have kind of um, it was a, I think it was a size zero. And then what I have gone in and done also on top of that is I've used some scissors to help to remove a lot more of the bristles on the brush. So it's even smaller. So it maybe has, oh gosh, maybe 10, 15 individual little hairs on it. And I use that to get um, some really fine detail. It works really well for me. So you may want to try that too if you can't find a brush that's small enough. Um, it's great for getting in the little corners and crevices on your painting, but also for very fine detail work such as um, veins or outlining your work. Um, you can see on this front petal that I added a lot more white to the paint color. I really wanted that front petal to appear to be closer to you. Um, in that you can see a lot more detail on that front petal. So I did start with more of a mix between the magenta color and the um, ultramarine blue and added a lot of white. Now that front petal gets a little bit deeper towards the, as the um, flower head starts to merge into the stem. Um, so you can see I added a lot more, a deeper color um, down towards the base of the flower. So it appears that that stem is, all of the petals work down into that stem. So you want that to be a little bit darker to give some dimension that the petals are losing kind of that round shape, that billowing out uh, of the center of the petals as they're working down into the stem. The stems are painted with that sort of light lavendery wash of the purples with the white. And then crocus flowers tend to, um, the little stems that they come out on, they're kind of a washy sort of um, watery green shade. Um, and you'll see me paint that here in just a second. But now I'm going back and adding lighter and lighter areas of um, um, more of that whiter color in purple. Um, it's really an icy purple towards the tips of the petals just to kind of help that area have a brighter highlight area where the sun would be hitting the tops of those petals brighter. That's where I'm adding that sort of icy, icy purple towards the very top. Now for the smaller bud flower, I wanted it to again uh, appear to be a little bit different of a shade of that blue purple. Um, again, as I stated before, I think that when you're painting realistically, any sort of variances in your colors um, from flower to flower or even petal to petal, it just gives a lot more realistic effects um, in your painting it's more interesting to look at if everything was the same exact tone um, and shade it would be pretty boring to look at so and also if you notice in nature nothing no two flowers are exactly the same color um, one flower may have more purple one more blue um, 
and stems and leaves are the same thing. So just keep in mind, make sure that you are not trying to exactly duplicate what you've already painted. Just have some variances in those colors. Um, so the little bud was plain, painted more with just the ultramarine blue on its own. I didn't add very much magenta to that. And you can see in the finished work um, that sort of difference in colors. Um, it'll make your paintings look more realistic. And again, that the stems um, have sort of that minty green um, color to them. Both stems have that, and it just makes them look a little bit more translucent. Um, a lot of times when crocus are freshly um, growing out of the ground, um, think of a, a, a green plant. If you've ever seen grass that's been covered over and it hasn't received the sunlight, they, that coloring in the grass is more washed out. It doesn't have the you know bright green shade to it so crocus stems are kind of the same thing they're they get to be a little bit like a translucent white color coming straight out of the ground so it's a very light green shade and i just used um uh, a little bit of green a little bit of hooker's green mixed with white to get that sort of translucent shade for the stems and um, you can sort of have the darker green on the outline area of the stems and then down where there's like a hood sort of area that comes up around the stems that is also painted in that minty green. Now I'm working on the stamens right now um, and those are the little yellow areas in the center of the flower. Those are the areas of most flowers where the bees come to collect the pollen. So those little stamens or filaments in the middle of the flower, um, I base them with kind of a darker yellowy green to outline them. And then I mixed a whiter, um, a little bit of white into the yellow. Um, and that went on the tips of those uh, stamens so they would appear brighter up out of the center of the flower. And now I've got my tiny little brush there. You can see I'm sort of adding a little bit of veins on some of the petals um, just to make them look a little bit more realistic. Um, a lot of times these, any sort of petal actually, if you look at it closely, there are veins which are typically a darker color than you find in the petal themselves. So this is where I'm using my fine little brush and just kind of going back in and deepening that, you know, the area um, on the flower head where, before it starts to get into the stem and just sort of those uh, vein areas. So even though I've built up the layers with acrylic paint on the petals, you also sometimes have to do that with your finer details. You may be able to do one pass with a color with your small brush and then you'll have to go back in sometimes with more passes um, heavier concentration of paint on your paintbrush to get those areas to kind of pop out a little bit more all right so now we're ready to start on the leaves for the crocus flowers and the leaves for crocus flowers are very thin um, and almost like grass like so a little bit thicker than grass um, if you can kind of think of um, onion greens um, that should kind of help you they're very flat and smooth and they have sort of a bluish tint bluish green tint to them so the way I mix that up is I used some hooker's green 
and I mixed the ultramarine blue with it. Um, and that was the base coat for the um, crocus leaves. Now, the way you wanna paint this is you wanna paint them to appear to be kind of overlapping each other because they grow, you know, the crocus is actually a bulb. So if you think of everything being kind of centrally, the bulb is underground, the leaves and the flowers kind of come out through the top of the crocus bulb. So, and sort of fan out, but they are also coming from a round object. So in order to have them have the appearance of sort of growing out of that round bulb, um, you want to have them to be overlapping. So the way to do that is to pick, decide which leaf is going to be in the front, which leaves are going to be um, kind of overlapped by that front leaf and kind of go around the shape of the crocus. So, and you do that by shading. So around the base of the leaves, you're gonna decide whichever leaf is in the front, that is going to have shadows um, behind that to the edges of it. And definitely the leaves that have the appearance of being in the back are going to be shadowed um, by that leaf that's in the front. So you wanna just add a little bit more blue to that green so that it becomes a little bit darker. And then the leaves towards the tips get a little bit more lighter and you add um, lightness to those greens by adding just a little bit of white to them. Now the little bulb off to the right side of the flower of the larger fully opened crocus flower, I wanted those greens to again be a little bit different just like the flower head. So I mixed that green with, um, it was again the base of the hooker's green, but I added a little bit more yellow to that green so that it would be a little bit different from the blue or green. Um, and then also remember you have to paint these in layers. So just plan on having multiple, adding a few layers of paint to your leaves. Um, and within the leaves, there's variances in the colors. There's a little bit more yellow in one spot, a little bit more brighter green in another. Um, some have a little bit more of um, white added. So it, again, you want those variances in your um, painting so that it appears more realistic. Now the little sheaf that comes up out of the ground that is closest to the flower stem is kind of, again, um, I spoke about this earlier in the video, it's kind of like a translucent green. So I mixed that up, I mixed up kind of like a minty green um, with a little bit more white to it. So just keep that in mind, even though it's in the background, Behind the main leaves, um, it has sort of that icy green look to it. Um, and um, the last little thing that this little crocus, um, I did not want it to just appear to be floating on the paper. So I added in the um, foreground underneath the leaves, um, I wanted to paint a snow look. So I achieved that by using a lot of water on my brush and I mixed up a little bit of blue into that. And that was my first layer. Um, and the next layer, I added a little bit of green into that blue so that it would have sort of a little bit darker base that went down towards the bottom of the snow. And the last layer over the top of that I just layered more white over the top so it would have the appearance of a little bit of a shadow underneath with the blue and the green and the white appeared to be kind of on the top of the you know blue and green and made it brighter so i hope you give this uh crocus painting a try um, again i will add a link in the comments to the drawing so feel free to print that out and um, try the, your hand at drawing your crocus first before you paint it if you have any questions at all um, i would love to have them and help you figure out how to do your painting and um, thank you so much for watching this video um, I enjoy you all coming and watching my videos and hope you learn something from them. If you do, please hit that like and subscribe button so that you are notified the next time I post a video. Thanks so much for spending your time with me and watching my videos. Have a great rest of your day.